In the beginning, there were the old gods, but once they fell to their own nature, the new gods arose, and a battle between light and dark began. High Father versus Dark Side. They were never able to defeat each other, and things were always at a standstill. Until now. The High Father has taken his army to the universe of the Lantern Corps to see what this power is that they wield. And once he discovered how powerful it was, he set his troops forth to kill and claim every Lantern Ring. No mortals should wield that power. Kyle Rayner, the wielder of the White Ring, has gone to New Genesis to learn how to control his powers, as he is unaware of the High Father's decree against all Lanterns. Hal Jordan is leading the Green Lanterns that were not on the Green Lantern homeworld to the home of the Sinestro Corps, and he realizes that the only way for them to even stand a chance against beings that can shatter constructs is to team up with Sinestro. As they approach Lyssa, Sinestro's council tells him that the Green Lanterns are now upon the world, and it is his daughter Sorenik to blame. But as they begin to argue, Sinestro tells them both to be quiet while he welcomes the Green Lanterns. Sorenik gets to work trying to patch up the injured Green Lanterns, and Sinestro goes to Hal just as the Templar Guardians that were keeping Kyle's secret arrive. They explain that the New Gods now have the most powerful of the Lanterns, the White Lantern. Hal is confused, he thought Kyle was dead, and Sinestro wants to know how Kyle is the most powerful. The Templar Guardians explain that they have kept Kyle in hiding because he obtained the Life Equation. Saiyan Walker hears that his friend is alive and he runs forward to hear of Kyle's survival himself and the Guardians explain. They were just trying to save Kyle from himself, from what he could become, the end of everything. Hal is even more confused. You drop out out of nowhere and tell me that my friend is alive, but bad news, you've misplaced him? We're at war and we could have used your help. We know you were at war, Hal Jordan. How do you know that? I haven't seen you in a year. That is for another time. Hal thinks about it, the new gods have each ring, red, yellow, green, sapphire, orange, blue, and indigo, and now they have a white ring. There is only one ring that they don't have, and the guardians stop him right there. We will not allow you to do that, Hal Jordan. It is madness. And they demand that he find a new solution. So he walks into Sinestro's chambers to try and figure this out when Sinestro joins him. Hal, you did well because you were unpredictable. That's why I can never kill you. Any plotter or schemer in my path, I will crush. But I can't predict you, Hal Jordan. Sinestro decides that he will move everyone to the antimatter universe of Quard and hide them there. While he does that, Hal should do what he shouldn't do, what no one is predicting. Go get the Black Ring of Death. All the way over on Earth, Black Hand has an army of zombies enacting a circus for him, everything from Harry Houdini to the Flying Graysons, and the police are too scared to walk in and stop him. So they stand outside, preventing the zombies from escaping until Hal Jordan arrives. Black Hand gets ready to fight against Hal, but he tells him, I'm not here to stop you. I want you to take this show on the road, Black Hand. The rest of Sinestro, Indigo, and Green Corps all go to Quard as the Star Sapphires are being invaded by the new gods. But as they enter Quard, the Guardians ask, where is Hal Jordan? Sinestro looks at them. Your great leader that led dozens of lanterns to their deaths is off to raise reinforcements. He went for Black Hand after we forbade it. He's playing with forces too dangerous, too uncontrollable. But that is a matter we must address later. We need to rescue Kyle Rayner before they can turn him into a weapon. Sinestro informs them, the home of the new gods is beyond our reach. The Indigo tribe can't teleport us there, so forget Rayner. I will do what we must. Enough! Jon Stewart shouts, interrupting the arguing. They need to rescue whatever hues of the spectrum remain. Sinestro suggests that they rally the Star Sapphires as they are still at full strength, but Jon tells them that they can't trust the Star Sapphires. Recently, Jon's lover turned out to be a shapeshifter pretending to love him, and then he found out that the real fatality was forced to love him because of her ring. But he's quickly convinced that they can't leave that planet there to get wiped out, and then Sinestro walks them all over to the Weaponeer for new weapons. Ones that can fight the new gods, weapons built out of the shattered remains of the old White Lantern rings. A sword and shield. Sorenik tries to talk to Jon about his feelings, but he still can't believe what happened to him with the Star Sapphires. But when she tries to talk to him, he snaps at her. I'm not a victim! And he leaves for battle. Meanwhile, over on Xamaron, the Star Sapphires are already embroiled in a war with the New Gods when the Indigo Tribe teleports John and his new weapons there. He stares down the New Gods General. The white light that caught the eye of you New Gods? It's a blade that cuts both ways. And he jumps in swinging. While John is battling it out, Kilowog tells the Zamarions to get everyone. They are leaving ASAP. The Weaponeer and John begin beating on the General, smashing her helmet and revealing it to be the New God Artemis. And she has her soldiers fire a net over the entire group before they can escape. But it's not a normal weapon. The moment John tries to cut through it with his new white light sword, it breaks. Their rescue mission is a failure due to a simple net. But John asks the Sapphires. They can teleport to their true loves. Can't they take everyone with them? But sadly, they can't. They'll just go chasing their loves across the universe and leave everyone else trapped here. Then one of the dying members of the Corps has an idea to give her ring to John. Disgusted, he replies with, I would rather die. Not after you brainwashed Vitality and forced her to love me. 
but they explained that in order for Fatality to love him, she needed to have that love in her heart already. The ring floats off the Sapphire's finger and over to John, where he eyeballs it and accepts it. John Stewart of Earth, you have great love in your heart. Welcome to the Star Sapphires. He then points his ring into the air. For God, country, and the core. And with his love for the core, he grabs everyone within the net and he pulls them back to the core's headquarters. As they flee, Artemis' soldiers ask her why she didn't shoot the ring out of the air. She could have totally done that. She could have stopped this from happening. And she tells them, it doesn't matter. They'll all be converts soon. Meanwhile, over on New Genesis, a boom tube opens and Highfather steps through while Kyle and Carol follow him. They have no idea of the events that are transpiring everywhere else, and the Highfather has promised that he will help Kyle control the White Ring. Highfather walks Kyle over to a machine and he informs him that he can't separate the life equation from the ring, but he can remove the ring from Kyle's finger. Kyle kisses Carol when she objects, telling her he has to. He can't risk the universe. He won't risk Carol. So he puts his hand into the device, and in a blinding flash of light, it is removed and placed into the hands of the High Father. He takes it and puts it into his device, and as Carol picks up Kyle off of the ground, she asks High Father, will he return the rings that he stole now? Stolen? Those rings are not stolen. That would imply legitimacy of your stewardship that never existed. Those rings are rightfully mine, as I have sent for them for further study. If you aren't giving them back, what are you going to do? Save the multiverse. He then shows Kyle and Carol his scepter, with the white ring inside of it. I will use the life equation to remake your universe beginning with Earth. I will prepare it for the war with Darkseid. No! You said yourself that no one person should have that power. No one should decide for everyone. And as she says this, Carol bombards the High Father with the power of her ring. Everything she has draining it faster and faster. And she tells Kyle to think of something fast. She can't keep doing this. But this is all a part of the High Father's plan because her ring reaches zero. And then he uses the white ring to cast them out of his chambers down to the barren world of old Genesis, their old planet. Kyle Rayner and Carol Ferris are no longer of any use to him. They are both now stranded in a foreign universe with no rings, no power, and no way home. But the High Father isn't done. He walks to a city where he holds up the new scepter to its willing participants, and he tries to change them into the new god's army. And it works. He changes an entire city into the willing soldiers of his army. He has ultimate power! Meanwhile, Guy Gardner and Simon Baz are still on Earth wondering what they should do next. And Guy, in his infinite wisdom, decides that he doesn't care if he's gonna die. He's gonna fight against these things. So they argue with Cyborg and they convince him to use his boom tube to warp them to New Genesis, following the energy signature of one of the generals that attacked them. But once they boom tube the New Genesis, they quickly learn their mistake as they arrive in the bedroom of the soldier that attacked them. After a few hits, they are both unconscious and they wake up in the miracle cell of New Genesis. While this is happening, Sinestro is taunting Becca in deep space as a yellow construct, and they have a not-so-nice debate about the purpose of the Lanterns and the new gods, but he does admit that he is following her because he enjoys watching her work. And this is because she is worthy of a yellow ring. Becca of New Genesis, you have the ability to instill great fear. And she looks at the ring, but this hasn't been the only thing Sinestro has been tracking. He's been tracking all of the new gods in this universe, and John plans to use the Indigo Tribe to teleport every single one of them to the soldiers so that they can steal a mother box and warp in right on top of the new Genesis army. So, they all teleport off to the soldiers, but it's not where they were expecting to go. In the middle of a puff of smoke, they realize that Indigo One and her tribe betrayed them. They have been warped right into the middle of an ambush. And that concludes Act 2. Stick around next week for the conclusion with Act 3. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at ComicStory and Instagram at ComicStory. And you can follow us on our gaming channel, Eligible Monster, where you can find gaming comic books, you can find gaming Let's Plays, and you can find gaming Unnecessary Censorship. I'll see you guys next time right here 